Hi, my name's Doug Bentley. I'm responsible for R&D at Claris Group. We're here today in our UK Technical Centre to talk about diesel particulate filters. And we're going to have a look at this Vauxhall Zafira 1.9 CDTI. Let's take a look. So we're looking at the Vauxhall Zafira. It's one of the most problematic vehicles for DPFs. The DPF, of course, lives in the exhaust system. You can see it here on the vehicle. The catalytic converter is mounted at the front and a DPF filter at the back. On some applications, these are combined in one unit, but on this vehicle, they're separate, but on the same assembly. Front to back, you've got the tubing where the exhaust passes through. You've got fixtures and fittings like flanges and brackets mounting to the vehicle, and of course, pressure and temperature measuring points. Let's take a look upstairs at the internals. From a distance, it looks much like a catalytic converter. You can see the monolith inside, the suspension mat, and the outer body. But if you look more closely, you'll see that each of the pores is alternately blocked. The gas can travel down the open tube, but at the end, that pore is blocked. The gas must travel through the porous filter wall to exit in the next tube. Particulate matter cannot pass through these porous walls, yet the exhaust gas can. So exhaust gas passes through the filter and out to the rear, but the black suit is gradually collected. As the filter becomes full, it needs to be dealt with, and this is called regeneration, where the filter is cleaned. When the filter is around 50% full, Pressure sensors before and after the DPF will notice that the DPF is ready for regeneration. Regeneration simply means burning the particulate matter away. And this is a process that takes around 15 minutes and happens where the exhaust gas temperature is increased from maybe 300 degrees up to around 600 degrees. During this time, the black particulate matter, the suit, is burnt away and the filter is emptied. This whole cycle repeats around every three to 400 miles. Regeneration can be triggered in what's called an active mode. This is where the vehicle itself manages regeneration to happen. Maybe a fuel-borne catalyst, such as the Eloy's fluid on Peugeot vehicles, is added. Or the fueling of the vehicle is changed temporarily to aid a high gas temperature. And this allows the particulate matter to be burnt away. In other modes of driving, what's called passive regeneration can happen. Passive regeneration, for example on a motorway run, the exhaust gas temperature is naturally high and regeneration of the filter occurs while driving. So let's talk about legislation. Legislation does affect DPF products. In fact, any product with an integrated catalytic converter and DPF within the same unit must be type approved and that affects all vehicles from 2001 onwards. Products where the DPF is separate to the catalytic converter, so just a DPF filter on its own, only need type approval from Euro 5 onwards, that's 2009. So how do we type approve our products? Well type approval is basically a guarantee of quality for our customers. This means that the product is independently approved in an external laboratory. The product is benchmarked against the original equipment to ensure that the replacement is both satisfactory for emissions reduction as well as noise, pressure and particulate matter reduction. On top of this, the product, when approved, is engraved clearly with an approval number and our customers can request a copy of this certificate as evidence that product's approved. Let's consider failure modes. Well, first of all, much like a catalytic converter, these units can be prone to thermal shock, physical damage or even corrosion. But most normally, it's blockage that causes these units to fail. Blockage occurs when the unit has failed to regenerate and simply becomes full. At this point, normally there's an engine warning light on the dashboard and the vehicle sometimes goes into a limp home mode to get you back to the dealer. When replacing the unit, you must also do full diagnostics work on the vehicle and rectify any faults, not just replace the unit itself, or the unit will simply become blocked again. Normally, you should check that any regeneration fluid, such as Eloy's fluid, has been replaced or topped up, or check that the back pressure measuring points before and after are clean and clear. So finally, let's consider future trends. This DPF is off an older vehicle. It's actually separate to the DOC unit itself, so the filter can be replaced. On the latest models, particularly for Euro 5 2009 onwards, the whole assembly contains the catalyst and the filter brick. These units can be very complex and costly to replace, so you should consider this during your diagnosis work.